The first thing we're going to do in regard to winterizing is we're actually going to blow some air through the lines of the black tank flush line. Um, this line is actually not associated with any of your water systems, so it's good to blow the air through to get anything out of your tank. You're going to want to make sure that your handles are pulled so that anything that's residual comes out. The very first thing you need to do is remove the actual piece that's in here. This is um, a protection, so it will uh, allow nothing to come back through when it's flushing. I always put it in my pocket so you don't lose it. You can just pull that out with a flathead screwdriver or some sort of a uh, uh, tool of some sort. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you have a pressure gauge that goes onto um, your, or screws into your tank and can go onto your air compressor. Now, a lot of people do this and our manual actually does it, um, says it in some of the areas to do this last. I choose to do this first only because I don't want to get any of the antifreeze onto the ground. So if you were to do this last, if you have any antifreeze in that tank, it is going to um, kind of send it out onto the ground. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pressure gauge. You're going to attach it to your air compressor by pulling down, pushing on, and then securing it. Our manual states 70 PSI is the max pressure for this. We're not gonna go very high. We're probably gonna go up to about 40. If nothing comes out, then you're good to go and everything should be have drained out of your tank. But at least now you know that this line is cleaned out and it won't be affected by any winter weather. After you've blown the air out of the black tank flush line, you're gonna close up your valves and make sure that everything is tight. You're gonna uh, put that screen back in and close up that black tank flush uh, cap. And then you're gonna head over to your low point drains. The low point drain stops are gonna be fairly tight in there, so you may need a wrench or something to, uh, to get them loose. But once you have them loose, you can go ahead and unscrew by hand, pull them out, allow any residual water to come out. Make sure you put them aside so you don't lose them because this is how you're going to cap them back up. Once the water has completely drained, you will recap these to ensure that no antifreeze comes out through these drains. Make sure they are tight before you continue on. After you have drained the low point drains, you're gonna go ahead and come over to the water heater. One of the most important things to do is to make sure that you don't have any power on right now because we want you to be safe. So unplug your coach from any type of shore power and uh, pull your battery disconnect just to be on the safe side. We're gonna go ahead and do two things with this back water heater to drain it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do here is you're going to pull up on the temperature pressure relief valve. Then right here is your actual water heater valve where you're going to be able to release the uh, water. Now this is fairly tight, so you want to uh, slowly open it with a pair of pliers or something. It's a tight squeeze, so just little bits at a time. Once you get it so that you can actually move it by hand, go ahead and unscrew it and allow the water to drain. Once the hot water tank has completely drained, go ahead and take a towel, dry up any of that residual water, especially down on your stickers or anything like that, and put the cap back in. Make sure it's tight, and then you will pull your pressure temperature relief valve. Once you have drained the low point drains, as well as your water heater, you're going to need to access the water heater bypass. So in order to do that, uh, most dealerships may have walked you through this as to where you can locate it. If you don't know where your water heater bypass valves are, you can give us a call anytime and we can help walk you through that. In this model, it's actually located behind this wall here. This wall can actually be removed by taking out two screws and then prying it out. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn the top valve one turn clockwise, 
the center valve, one turn clockwise, and the bottom valve, which you actually won't be able to see in this video, one turn clockwise. These valves are going to stay like this throughout your entire winter, and they will not be put back to their original position until you have uh, de-winterized for the spring and summer. After you have turned your water heater bypass valve, you're gonna go and find your winterization valve. In this model that we are working on, the winterization valve is located underneath the oven behind the drawer. Um, to remove the drawer, there are instructions within your manual, but you have glide handles. You press down on one and you pull on the other and pull the drawer out. We've already done that, so we're gonna go down to the pump itself. The winterization valve will be in a normal open state. In order to complete your winterization, you need to turn it into the closed state. To do that, you're going to turn it clockwise until you feel resistance. It is now in the closed state. You will then take your hose attached to your pump, remove the cap, and you will take this piece of hose and put it into your jug of antifreeze. Once it's in the jug of antifreeze, you're gonna go over to your panel and turn on your water pump. Once your pump is on and running, you're going to go to each faucet, including your outdoor faucets, turn them on and let them run until the pink antifreeze comes out of the faucet. Don't forget to allow some of it to drain into your tank as well as putting some down the toilet for your black tank.